Yeah, I've worked for most of the future for about seven years. So being able to come outside and work in landscapes like this is a fantastic part of the job. Um, really satisfying and uh, being able to see the differences that the conservation work that we're doing makes is, uh, is really nice. Problems that the peatlands in this area face are probably more apparent than anywhere else in the UK in that the peat became so badly damaged and eroded that it was just staring everyone in the face, you couldn't avoid it, there were just vast areas of bare peat. So it was became increasingly obvious through the latter years of the 20th century that something had to be done about it. Blanket bogs in good condition are an inherently waterlogged um, habitat and that's the important thing about them, they need to be waterlogged um, in order to effectively store carbon. Um, you, you would get streams and little channels naturally flowing off blanket bogs in good condition. Um, one of the things that the restoration and the conservation work that we're trying to do is to slow down the rate at which that water comes off. Um, so we've, by revegetating bare peat areas and putting in dams, we've been able to slow down that water and also decrease the amount of peat that's being eroded away so that would be carbon being lost. A healthy blanket bog needs to really remain wet and saturated for much of the time and when you get these waterlogged environments um, things don't rot when they die very fast so all plant material comes to the end of its life, the plant dies and it sits in water because there's no oxygen it doesn't decompose very fast at all so therefore peat layers build up and all this carbon that those plants have trapped when they're alive is just stuck there, stored in the ground and this process can go on indefinitely, so you can have thousands and thousands of years of carbon stored under metres and metres and metres of peat. So I'm just having a look around for some sphagnum for us to look at. No luck yet, but I'm sure we'll find some. Sphagnum is it's kind of the architect or the engineer of a blanket bog in a way. The cell, cell structure of sphagnum is really interesting. They've got these big empty cells that stay open even when they're dry. So as soon as water's in the environment it sucks it in and it holds onto it a bit like a sponge. It enables the surface to stay wet all the time. So if you pull it out really really carefully you can see this is the kind of structure. So you've got this top part which is the growing live part and then down at the bottom of the stem you can kind of see it here it starts to go a bit brown and that's basically the bit that's died but instead of rotting that will just be compressed among the other vegetation that's died into peat and then in theory the top bit can just keep growing up and up so they can live for a long time and if you're careful you can pull out these strands and they can be really really long. For the future, um, there's still a lot of potential for these peatlands in this area to become a lot better than they are. So we've kind of done the immediate emergency work of trying to cover the bare peat surface, but there's still a way to go to increase the plant diversity, to get more sphagnum back. I think they can play a really important role. If we can get them into active condition, they can be sucking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it as a permanent store of carbon underground so they could play a really important role in reducing the UK's emissions.